I wound up in a red light district in Thailand and I'm hiding from a child with the DIY water bazooka thing. This entire week was one of those experiences. You get everything you signed up for and so much more. Good morning, it's my first day in, in Phuket. Feels like it's gonna be the first day of school, meeting new classmates. It's like 15 minutes walk away. 15 minutes walk feels a lot longer when there are no sidewalks and it's about 35 degrees outside. I just arrived and I picked up my free gear. It was really hard to pick, but I wanted the Tropical Leopard and the DT because I need a new black rash guard. I'm gonna head over to the mat now. This actually used to be a Muay Thai gym, but they built a really nice big space around the back for wrestling and jujitsu. Here, waiting for class to start. Looks crowded. I was wondering where Craig was, and suddenly he appeared out of nowhere. The way the light shone on him, his beard, surrounded by his disciples, I couldn't tell if he was a man of God or a cult leader. Okay, in hindsight, definitely more of a cult leader. I was just confused because he taught us something called the crucifix escape. And I think even hardcore Christians can agree that's something Jesus could have used. We did some drilling, we did some sparring, and before we knew it, that's the end of the first class. Who's that guy? <laughs> Fight camps aren't known to have the most luxurious accommodations, so I was concerned to say the least. But I lucked out with this hotel called Alphabeto, and the best part, you get to walk straight out to this massive, refreshing, bacteria-killing pool. Time to cool down. But now I'm gonna go see if I can rent a bike. Motorbikes are an efficient, cheap, convenient way to get around Phuket. However, they're also the most dangerous. So renting one would be an extremely stupid idea. So I got my bike. It's my beloved Scoopy. I'm gonna take a break at this beach first, have, a, have some water, hydrate. Look at that beach. And look at this guy. Probably a pedophile trying to escape the country. As I march into the cool, refreshing beach water, I notice some familiar faces from the gym. Starting with this guy, Joseph Chen. This sweet looking guy is actually a jiu-jitsu phenom. One of the best prospects to come out of Asia. Craig kidnapped him, brought him to America, and began a cycle of physical and mental torture and turned the one sweet Asian boy into this. Then there's this guy, Kaya Rudolph. Also a highly touted jiu-jitsu prospect. Craig again kidnapped him, brought him to his camp, and began a period of methodical, physical torture. And last but not least, this bearded looking mermaid. His name is Tyler the Uke. Sweet guy, taught kids martial arts. Craig brought him on board the team, started putting him in his inappropriate videos, and before you knew it, again, here's more torture. We hung out on the beach together. Such great guys. The one thing all three had in common outside of Craig is that they used jujitsu as a passport to allow them to see and experience the world. All right, I spent uh, a refreshing hour and a half. I actually planned to be here for a few minutes, but I spent a lot of time there at the beach. I was hanging out with Joseph and people. Then um, when they left, uh, Tyler from B Team showed up and then we we're hanging out just chatting. Super cool guy. What a interesting life story he has. Uh, he's like obsessed with martial arts as a kid, then moved to Asia and he's been here ever since. A quick shower and bike ride later and we're back for another training session. Craig and Joseph showed us some more ninja moves. That's it for the second seminar. We did uh, back escapes. Um, it was pretty fun. And then we had some rolls. I rolled with some pretty giant people, but it's still fun. I look so red and tan because of the heat. And look at how like the, the gym is right behind me, but look what's behind here. Literally in the middle of the woods. So I headed back home for another dip in the pool and a shower. I walked to our welcome dinner, saw some Muay Thai fights on the street. I did some laundry in the tub because I haven't found a laundromat yet. The next morning, there was a super fight on. Former UFC champ and friend of Craig Jones, Israel Adesanya was fighting for the championship belt. We learned our technique and gathered around the TV for what should be an epic fight. It was pretty cool because it was the first time I watched a UFC event with someone who was actually buddies with one of the fighters. I don't know if that makes it more fun or more awkward, but we were treated to one of the most epic knockouts of all time. Oh, <laughs> 
knocked him out three times. After training, I jumped into the pool to cool down, heated myself up again with some spicy mincemeat noodles, with some spicy pad thai, took a quick nap, and before I knew it, I was on my way back to the gym. I'm here early for the next class, and what I really like is all the pros, including Craig and everyone, are here early. They're always here early, they're always training, they're always working on stuff. That's true passion, that's true dedication. For a bunch of assholes, that's pretty impressive. On to class, we did some rear triangle escapes, other back escapes, and before I knew it, it was all done. I'm riding to old Phuket town, which is pretty far away, like 30, 40 minutes, so I want to get moving before it gets dark. Just got to the night market. It's crowded and mayhem. I need to find a family of Indians amongst all this. Eventually, I found my cousin and her adorable daughter. Huh? Say, Uncle Rohit. I noticed she couldn't quite focus on me, and with very good reason. She was on the lookout for Meow Meows. Where's the meow? Show me. Show. That one? Day three. Let's go. There was more space on the mat today because like a dozen people got food poisoning. We can grab the butt cheek here as well. Just as butt sore from last night. <laughs> Craig taught us some pretty cool sweeps. After class, I watched Craig perform dangerous professional wrestling moves on paying students against their will, embarrassing them publicly and on social media. To be honest, it was pretty fun to watch. Put your hand up if you're going on the boat ride. So there I was on one of these boats, bouncing up and down on the water, like an Indian P. Diddy in Thailand. And before long, we're at this beautiful beach where the water was crystal clear. I had lunch with a MMA fighter, up and coming, known as the Haitian Sensation. A great nickname, one I wish I could use, but for obvious pigmentation issues, I cannot. I think a bunch of tourists just paddled over from Korea. What a time to be alive. Just got back from the beach, it's time for another session. Craig taught us this thingy, but you're not here for that. You're here to see me fight with the Haitian sensation. I know it looks like he's bigger than me, but it's just an optical illusion. Just wrapped up today's class. The Sagadas are singing. Uh, it was quite a fun class. We did Octopus Guard and a few other things. Really enjoyed it. What a life. <laughs> this is so much fun. Like, we're in a nice place, like beautiful island. Today I was at a pool, I was at the beach. I like, I'm training twice a day. Um, with really good company and good people, like really appreciate having this time and wish more people could have stuff like this going on. All right, today's one of the only days we have a free morning, so me and where is it? There, me and Senor Scoopy are going for a ride. We're gonna explore the west coast, all of the beaches. Something that's quite cool about this bike is like the key is actually infrared, um, so I'll show you how it works. You see how I just threw the key in that cup holder? I'm really going to regret that later. First stop is a lookout point on top of a mountain. I just biked up, see what the view is actually like, and then we're going to head off beach after beach after beach. What a view. On to the next beach. I passed Kata Beach. It's a bit small, so I kept riding. Now I'm at Karan Beach. Nice beach, nice sand. The beach goes pretty far. I'll show you how far. Let's go over there. The beach goes here, it curves all the way around the other side. This is a giant beach. I see some people parasailing over there, whatever you call that. Not for me though. I plan to die of natural causes. What a pleasant ride and the next beach isn't even that far away. So this is an issue. According to Google Maps, the beach is up this very steep, stony, sandy mountain about 10 minutes ride away. I probably shouldn't do this, but then again, where's the fun in that? The ride got real bumpy real quickly. I hit one rock, and then another rock, and before I knew it, there were rocks everywhere. It's okay, 
I'll just power through. It's the worst that could happen. We've encountered some drama. Basically, I've been riding up this really bumpy hill and then I just got up the hill and I realized I dropped the key at some point. The key is actually infrared. Yeah, that, that was a real bad idea. <sighs> yeah, not ideal. I'm trying to find this thing on foot, but it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Maybe I'll get back on the bike and figure it out. <sighs> it's hot. I feel like Moses in the desert. This is really challenging because A, the road is bumpy. B, I'm trying to avoid the rocks and look for a key at the same time. C, everything looks like a rock or a key. It's also at this point when I realized I gave a $500 deposit for this bike so they could take as much as they want for that key. The odds of finding this thing are low, so I decided I'd give myself a time limit. If I don't find the key in, say, 30 minutes, I'll just have to ride back, tell them how stupid I am <laughs> and what happened. I don't know how I found it. Look at the ground I'm searching. All right, I'm gonna get that key off the ground. Get to near my journey and head up towards Freedom Beach. Whew, close call. So I thought losing the key was bad enough, but now I have to hike down this. How would you describe this? Some type of prehistoric staircase? This beach better be worth it. As I head down what seems to be like a hike to forever, I keep passing tourists like every few minutes that look like they just come out of a war. I see sand. Check this out. Secret little beach. Let's see what it's like. All right, so I've been hanging around this beach for a little while now. Actually, it is pretty awesome. The sand is super fine. When you walk out to the water, there's like no stones, no corals, no trash. The sand is just smooth and soft. So you walk out there, it's not super crowded. There's a lot of like trees and greenery in like every direction. I'm trying to climb up this goddamn hill. It was during this upward climb that I realized I really don't like hiking, especially uphill. So when I made it up top, the entire animal kingdom came to greet me. There were wild pigs, dogs, there were chickens. I feel like they all heard of my triumph today and spread the news amongst the animal kingdom. Believe it or not, I still have training after all of this. Got to the gym, Craig showed us some more stuff and decided to multitask and torture Joseph at the same time. I'm just gonna chill. I headed home and treated myself to some delicious red curry with duck, some fried rice noodles with seafood. Both were really good. For dessert, why not a Thai massage? Compliments of the Craig Jones camp. Craig has food poisoning today, so Joseph's teaching. Joseph is a great teacher and less of a dick, so no one's complaining learning from him. Although it is a funny coincidence, Craig gets food poisoning the same night he shot this video with a bunch of ladyboys. During rolls, this nice brown belt from Hong Kong and I created this strange Indian pretzel situation. Then we kicked this woman in the head, who responded with sexual assault. Meanwhile, remember Ryan, Craig's social media victim from the other day? Joseph said he's gonna try and do the same thing to him. Poor bastard. See, Craig's not even here and he's still a bad influence. With class over, it was time for another bike adventure. I went for a 30 minute ride up the east coast and back. I didn't spend too long because I needed a shower and get to class. He knows I'm going to use my knee to feed him in one direction. Craig was still out of commission for the afternoon session, so we had some more Joseph goodness. And I'm going to shift my head from one side of his body. Then back home for some really good deep fried prawn cakes. This thing is crispy. The sauce is nice. It's damn good. Also had some basil minced pork with rice. And for dessert, Another free Thai massage. So when I got the massage place, they ring like super nice to me the whole time. And then, uh, and then towards the end, they told me to sit down, have some tea. So I sat down, and then one of the girls asked me for my WhatsApp number. She said she wants to move to Singapore with me. I politely declined. And then the second I declined, they were like, "Get the fuck out of here." 
back to class the next morning, but with the noticeable addition of water guns everywhere. <laughs> we use these to attack each other and also to cool ourselves off. Uh, Joseph took over. Craig's still sick, but Craig should be back in the afternoon. Let's see. Now the classes are just flying by. As soon as I left the gym, these folks poured some ice water down my back. I started seeing way more people playing with water, shooting each other with water pistols. But surely, people aren't just gonna throw water into the faces of people riding vehicles, right? There's one guy riding past on a bike, holding his phone. They, they shot his phone with a water gun. So Song Kran, or the Thai New Year, is basically a countrywide water fight that lasts until they run out of water. What I really appreciate is old or young, local or tourist, nobody's off limits. There's a big crowd, I'm gonna try and run through it. <laughs> Since most of us were wet anyways, we decided why not just hang by the pool. A place that had become a really good spot to just connect with others in between class. What do you have to say about the diarrhea outbreak that's hit this camp? Um, what is your comment? I'll say it was inevitable, really. From the amount of people putting their penises in ladyboys and then putting street food in their mouths, I think it was inevitable. What do you think is more dangerous, the street food or the street walkers? Street food. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, yeah. Guys, today we're going to do the Q&A for the last session, and then uh, I'll give out a couple of belts. I'm going to give out a couple of black belts, but we might only give out one. I'm going to make it both roll with Joseph. Whoever gets submitted the most doesn't get promoted. <laughs> We got to ask a bunch of questions and Craig showed off his encyclopedic knowledge of jiu-jitsu, including answering some questions I've had for ages. Then it was promotions time. In jiu-jitsu, there are only five belts, so each one really means a lot. Even more so when you're giving a black belt to your older brother. Something that really inspired me about this camp was seeing how close Craig is to his original team, his original partners, his family, his brother. Despite their best attempts to come across like dicks, they're actually really, really nice guys. A few years ago, I made the deal with the devil to get graded under this guy, and it's been absolutely horrible. Not as horrible as having him as a younger brother beat me up, but uh, I hate to see him do well, but he has done well. And <laughs> Next, Craig was super kind, signing merch, taking whatever photos people asked for. He even helped me shoot a thumbnail for this video. And of course, I had to give this uh, oh, turn this way, big move a try. Lower. Oh. By the way, it hurt way more than it looked. Next, Craig realized you can use these water guns as a portable bidet. It was time for a group photo. We had our complimentary farewell dinner. These three stood outside to protect us, looking like some bouncers at some kind of gay nightclub. And before we knew it, it was party time. Part of the few that are here for Open Man on the final day. Only 14 of us made it. Yeah, they were in the Ladyboy bar. There was uh, some of the dudes were on those stripper poles and everything. It was kind of a, it's kind of a messy night. Honor to have my last roll with the homie Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, what's this camp been like? A different experience. It's Thailand. <laughs> I think that should be self-explanatory. The chill vibe, how good it was. Like it was just. Met so many good people, so it was very good. Awesome. It was like an amazing experience. Great instruction, great techniques, lots of good people on the mats, lots of good roles. Um, 
I feel like I always learn as much from the other people in the camp as I do from the actual instructor. You're asking a very hungry man, so it's hard to be enthusiastic. But I would genuinely say this is one of the best weeks of my life. Was it also like the best week of your life, like you were saying? Oh man, not with the food poisoning, but yeah, apart from that, it was pretty good. You do deadlifts every day, like it's the same same thing. This at least, uh, you know, the bar is fighting back. You just do it, and then you compete, and you're like, fuck, I need to get better. And then... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it's a deadlift spiral. Uh, I grew up in it as a kid, so it's my only choice to do now. <laughs> as an adult, do you regret your childhood decisions? Absolutely, since because of Joseph. <laughs> you notice Joseph got like a clap and a standing ovation, but Craig never did? Yeah, exactly. Craig. Two, two standing <laughs> ovations. Two standing ovations. Well. It was particularly good because Craig wasn't teaching for a few days. We had Joseph come in and do a few, quite a few sessions. So uh, I was really happy about that. So I really learned something useful for once. Yeah. I was pretty nervous. I was like, shit, these people came here for Craig, not me. And I was like, I gotta cut that out. What's the most annoying thing about being around Craig for you? Why don't you just sit out working? Um, <laughs> just, yeah, he just kicks your ass. That's what he does, yeah. But it's good. Yeah. Everybody needs that, you know? Everybody does. So that's my experience. I really loved it. Thanks so much for coming with me on this adventure. Let me know in the comments which parts you enjoyed. Hit like, and if you haven't, please subscribe. But most importantly, if you enjoyed it, share the video with some other people who might enjoy it as well. I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to be in the jungles of India looking for tigers. I'll see you then. Peace!